Assetto Corsa Competizione is the successor to what is now the most commercially successful thoroughbred racing sim of all time, Assetto Corsa. Stepping into those rather large shoes, ACC was a more focused effort from developer Kuno Simulazioni. Integrated directly with what was then known as the Blong Pond GT series, ACC was intended as an all-out simulator of only one type of motor racing, GT3. Perhaps to everybody's surprise then, the first early access iteration of the title was not only a rather poor GT simulator, but a pretty poor simulator overall. It drove decidedly worse than its predecessor for quite some time, which is quite an achievement given that they were touted to be running on identical physics engines. And this rough start is exactly why ACC turned out to be such a remarkable story. Kuno Simulazioni spent the next four and a half years regularly updating ACC through tough times and good, seeing its player counts rise and wane until they eventually, as is the thesis of this particular video, specifically with the last update, made ACC arguably the best consumer driving simulator ever made. Luckily, we don't have to traverse the entire span of those four and a half years because we've already done so with this video, linked in the card above and description below. Today, our focus is specifically on the final sprinkle of magic added by the recent 1.9 update. See, ACC's major hurdle over the last half decade has been to go from feeling like driving a barely mobile metallic oil tanker on ice skates to a reasonably light metallic chassis suspended on springs lying on rubber wheels. It decidedly lacked sensation and nuance in the extremities. The sidewall flex of the tires, the springiness of the suspension, the compression of the bump stops, the flex of the chassis, etc. Systemically, Kunoz targeted these issues one by one, from making the cars manageable over curbing to adding the sensation of chassis flex under extreme load, and to now very recently finally correcting the behavior of the suspension and tires, which in my opinion has made the crucial final bit of difference to bridge the gap between it, iRacing, and R Factor 2 in extreme situations. No longer when you send a car over rough curbing will it react as if it's trying to outrace Dogecoin to the moon after a tweet from Elon Musk. The tires and suspension actually act as if they bend and compress. Take a look at these extreme load scenarios and especially note how the suspension and tires act in tandem to absorb these forces and keep the car on the road. The Radeon run especially, as the car's entry was incorrect, which created a cascade of emergent effects from the car catching the dip of the curb on the left, which heavily unbalances it and forces it to go wide on exit, with the sidewall flex of the tires making the car feel like it was bouncing the entire way. ACC is now full of these exciting scenarios in waiting, where you can actually send the car full tilt over rough curbing, where if you go too far, you still have to deal with the fallout. Up until recently, this was almost the exclusive domain of iRacing and R-Factor 2 with their physical tire models. Now this sense of engagement and fun at the extremes is also reflected in ACC. One of the most wondrous things about this gradual transformation is that we began with a sim which was extremely unkind to any sort of overdriving. The slightest bit of tire slip was overpenalized, which led to us needing to develop extremely robotic and, let's face it, not very fun driving techniques. But now, it's not uncommon whatsoever to do the odd bit of snap oversteer mid-corner without dropping a full second wondering when the passenger slide will end. The driving model is snappy, responsive, and you're constantly being reminded of the interplay between mechanical and aerodynamic grip acting on the car. You can quite literally feel the difference between the two through the force feedback. If you really, really want a great example of this, simply set yourself up for a few laps in the modern Porsche Cup car and thank me later. Lacking traction control in the sophisticated aero of GT3, combined with a hefty amount of horsepower and an engine that's set squarely in the rear of the car, creates for one of the most intense, interactive, and enjoyable driving experiences you'll encounter anywhere. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, that's all good and well, but who is this guy to tell me what's more or less realistic? I am just a reclusive sim racer with more opinions than friends after all. 
which is exactly why I've recruited my friend, sim racing and real life GT3 extraordinaire, James Baldwin, to tell you about his experiences with the most recent version of ACC, directly contrasted to his real life driving experience at Spa and the British GT Championship. So the first thing I noticed was curbs and how cars go over them in a much more realistic manner now. And last year when I made the transition from sim to real in the Spa 24 hour, my biggest weakness as a driver was curb usage. I wasn't using enough curb, basically. So my training and mindset was based mostly around my lapping on ACC. I had no money for real life testing. My biggest time loss was in the final bus stop chicane, especially the right hander where you, in real life, you're all over that curb. But in version 1.8 on ACC in the McLaren, you couldn't really take a lot of curb anywhere. So I assumed it would be the same in real life. So I'm going a little bit off topic, but if I ever race in real life again, I'll make sure to use a driver coach because if I have any shortcomings making the transition from sim to real, the driver coach will stop me in my tracks, tell me what I'm doing wrong, and then it will just fast track my development as a driver. So that's that. Back to ACC for a minute, version 1.9. I like the sensation you get now where you can feel the tire flex. I like the fact that you can make fast setups without relying on the metas of previous patches because, yeah, I mean, they still are quick, those metas, but you can make setups that are nearly as quick without them. And these setups tend to be a bit more drivable, which makes for a better driving experience for all of us playing it. I mean, if you look at real life grids for a minute on the GT World Challenge grid, no one on that grid's going to be running fully negative toe front and rear. So, I mean, something's clearly not 100% right because you can still do that in ACC. Another example of it not being 100% accurate is the winning McLaren from the SRO Esports Bathurst 12 hour that took place recently. It did the entire race with traction control off. So clearly something's a bit broken there because in version 1.8, first of all, you couldn't do that. Second of all, in real life, there's no way anyone would do that because 100% you'd end up in the wall at some point. So. There's still a few things it needs to work on to fully bridge the gap from ACC to real life and make it as realistic as possible. But overall, version 1.9 is a step forward from version 1.8, which is the main thing as it ebbs ever closer to realism. In my opinion, it's still 100% the most realistic sim out there if you want to feel what it's like to drive a GT car. Thanks, James. Okay, so maybe we're not all the way there yet, but we're pretty darn close and it seems that James would mostly agree. So with that put to bed, and my opinions backed up by an actual professional in the vain hopes I don't get flamed to high heaven in the comments, we can finish up by talking about the things that ACC still needs to work on in order to become a truly perfect sim, if there could ever be such a thing. See, while ACC is the successor to Assetto Corsa, if you looked at them side by side now in 2023, you would not believe that. AC has been modded so thoroughly that it looks like it came out at least a decade after its sequel. The combination of CSP, Soul, Pure and Reshade have created quite possibly the best looking driving game ever created. And ACC, frankly, just looks like a plain video game next to it. We know that Assetto Corsa 2 is currently in development, and we can only hope that the developers have taken a cue from their own massive success and that of their modding community and choose to revert back to their own in-house engine for the new title. We have the ever-present reminder that Unreal Engine was never intended for racing sims as the way it renders objects in motion nullifies many of the awesome aspects of the physics engine. The cars still look unnaturally static, especially when compared to those in iRacing and the original AC. This is also an issue in Rensport broadcasts, which uses a newer version of the Unreal Engine than ACC. This leads us back to the perpetual lack of underbody damage. This would have been a great addition to balance out the new update being kind to rough curbing, as a counterweight to stop aggressive aliens being overly ambitious with how hard they decide to send the car. But alas, it wasn't to be. On the other end, you have plebs like me who mostly drive in single player, to which ACC barely has anything resembling an experience. The career mode is a shell at best, housing a loosely connected string of races with an AI that, more often than you would like, decides that you no longer exist and that the best course of action is to drive straight through you. Lastly, how could any sim claim to be perfect without the inclusion of the Nürburgring Nordschleife? Enough said. With the incoming GT2 pack, ACC has given us far more longevity than we otherwise would have ever expected from a GT specialist. Over the course of half a decade, it has been utterly transformed and remains one of sim racing's shining success stories. It will be lovely to see what new upgrades Kunoz have for the physics engine in the lead up to the much anticipated Assetto Corsa 2. Once that drops, you best believe that your reclusive sim racer will be here again, reminding you that I have more opinions than friends. Ciao.